It is uh, 6.30 in the morning and the car will be charged to 60% in 5 minutes. Ah, the car is preconditioning quarter to a seven. Why is this not opening? Ah, I think I've still got my Bluetooth off. Yeah, Bluetooth was off. It didn't know I was here. Again, unlock charge port. 18 degrees. It's freezing in here. It's freezing. Whew. Yeah, I don't wanna. If I turn this up to 22 now, it starts heating. <laughs> so I put it on low. Uh, put the fan on low. And that's fine. It will, it will warm up slowly. Yeah, 226 kilometers now. Yeah, so this was in total 9.2 kilowatt hours on AC overnight. Nice. Yeah, good morning guys. Day number two of the 5 amp challenge this week. I'm charging on 5 amp only uh, to 60% state of charge. I will have to increase this by the end of the week. I'll tell you more about this um, when we are there. Yeah, so yesterday I arrived with 42% state of charge last night and uh, could charge back to 60% just before I left this morning. So potentially you can charge about 100 kilometers overnight in 12 hours. So if you plug in at 7 p.m. and charge until 7 a.m. in the morning, you will have 100 kilometers in the battery on five amps. This is the slowest charge you can do with the Tesla a setting here in the car you dim it down to five amps it's just for a test I just want to see if people would be if they would be able to charge only on five amp for a whole week including including commute and other trips they have to do going shopping you know because we've got this discussion all the time people wanted the fast the fastest charging possible at home and some even think you can't buy an EV because you haven't got a charging station and a power point is not enough to charge the car and I want to disprove that with my 5 amp challenge this week well of course I have to say um, if you drive more than 100 kilometers a day so 50 kilometers to work and back would be the maximum I guess on 5 amps but most people commute less than that and there should be no issue at all. Well, I will have two more appointments this afternoon. They are almost not worth mentioning because they are just around the corner from where I work. So there will be no additional kilometers coming towards me today. It will be a boring day, so to speak, in terms of driving the PHEV, uh, the, PHEV <laughs> the Tesla end up. I just had something in my mind. <laughs> so this will be maybe an additional five kilometers or so. Yeah, well, this morning it's a bit annoying that this uh, precondition cannot be turned off. And precondition means it it um, yeah cools or warms up your cabin temperature to the set temperature. And I, I don't really want the car to pre-cool or preheat in the morning because we've got 24 right now at 7 a.m. in the morning and there's no need for any cooling or heating or any other preconditioning on the car. I just want to turn it off. I'm happy if the car is charged at seven, but it doesn't need to be preconditioned, but I cannot turn it off. But here again, software bug. If the car is asleep in the morning, it won't precondition. It won't do it. So if the car stops charging at about six o'clock in the morning and then goes to sleep afterwards because you're leaving at eight, the car will not wake up before eight o'clock and precondition. At least not my one. I've seen this a couple of times. It was only this morning because the car was still charging close to my departure time. So it was awake. And uh, the preconditioning usually kicks in about 20 minutes before you set your times. 
again this is this is just another software bug but I would I would really like to see uh, this tick box which you can set over the weekend to not precondition the car for the whole week so some people may not need it we don't have much ice or frozen screens and glass and stuff you know and I don't need to heat up the car in the morning either uh, so yeah but I, I tweet Elon again feature request um, I don't know what's going on here we've got 50 kilometers distance since yesterday but I've actually driven 60.65.3 uh, not this trip and consumption is 191 135 so I don't know why this one is not showing correctly this time um, anyway a battery temperature 30 degrees this morning we've got only 23 outside so the charge on eight on five amps overnight for nine hours has yeah kept the battery in a nice temperature level so we have not seen any any uh, region limit this morning ah oh, yeah i haven't told you both customer appointments have been moved to a thursday so i'm going home straight away now go home go home go home what does that mean <laughs> it still knows what i mean <laughs> go home Well, tonight I want to do another charging test. I want to show you what happens when you've got a power loss in the night and while the car is charging and uh, what happens then. So um, stay with me. Show trip A. So I've reset this uh, yesterday morning before we actually started on Monday morning. And I don't know why we've got such a difference here, 65 to 80 there's 15 kilometers missing and also the consumption is far higher than um, it actually is so i don't know this one has obviously not calculated one of the trips um never had this before it used to work okay so anyway we are in 45.2 percent state of charge could that be correct could that be correct I guess it could be energy. Yep, it is correct. Distance. Okay, so yeah, we are at 45% state of charge just um, from our commute. So starting with 60% and then coming home with 45% only. That's 15% battery usage just for the drive. That's quite a lot. Well, I'm sitting in the car having the aircon running during my lunch break so which sucks up a lot of energy of course which usually you don't do so i will uh, plug in the car and now we want to do this test huh, it has finally arrived so the metal aluminium aluminum like some people say has finally arrived this was the one i had before this is for the gopro this is an extension arm for the gopro and this is the Chinese sucker. The extension arm sits on here like this, and then there's the camera. So if you imagine this one sits under the glass, then there's the extension arm and there's the camera at the end. And let me show you. Look, this is the plastic arm. See how it flexes? And this was the problem with the shaking camera when I had the um, road trip. And this one, well, this one doesn't do it anymore. So that's how it looks like. Chinese sucker, Chinese metal extension arm and a Chinese camera. So this is just for the test. Um, Schedule charging off. Air condition off. Oh, well, the air condition is not part of the test, but it's annoying. 
So, extension cable, use the other pigtail, and let's plug in the car. Checking. Charging. Okay, so car is charging as expected. And we let it charge for about 10 minutes. And then we do the test. So I can now see we have charged 0.5%. Okay, let's do the test. So you are happily charging your Tesla at home. It's plugged in, has permanent power. It is charging, everything is good. The car should be full by morning. So now in the night when you are asleep, a bad thunderstorm rolls through and disconnects you from your power. Simulated by this switch, bang, you're losing power. Charger is off, car is not charging anymore. Nothing is happening, battery is not getting charged. After a minute or so, power comes back. Yeah, just a short disruption of power. Power comes back. And there you go. Charger kicks in, starts charging. Car is happily flashing, charging. Everything is good. The car will be fully charged in the morning. No problem at all, right? Right? Another night, another storm, turns off your power. And this time the power will stay away for half an hour or 45 minutes. It is now quarter past five. Let's talk again close to six. Oh, nice sunset. The sun. Beautiful. Okay, back to the car. I don't know what's going on tonight, but it doesn't want to go to sleep. It is still flashing there, communicating with the app. The car is still awake. We need we need to wait until it sleeps. So leave it sitting here for until it sleeps. Yeah, it's definitely not the app. I thought this as well at the beginning, but um, even without the app and without the um, OBD, the car does not go to sleep sometimes. And I don't know why and what the trigger points are, the car goes to sleep. Um, it may be connected to the Wi-Fi at the moment and sending data to Tesla or something, I don't know. But usually it takes only say 10, 15 minutes and then you can hear the, the cluck sound again from the relays and the battery disconnects and then the car goes to sleep. But tonight it's, well, this is over an hour now. Come on, go to sleep. Well, I was just doing something else here in the garage and I could hear the click of the relays and you can see the light is off now. There's no OBD light anymore. Yes, the app is still on, but you can see, no, you can't probably see, but there's an error message at the bottom of the app saying there's no connection to the OBD. So the car is fully asleep now. And some light. And here we go. Power comes back, yeah? After the storm, they fixed the issue, restored power. Power comes back to your home. Power has been restored to the UMC or to your wall charger, it doesn't matter. The car will not charge anymore. Yes, well, so in my eyes, this is totally, this is clearly a bug. At any time during the night when you charge, you've got a power loss due to a storm or technical fault, whatever, a tree crash onto a power line somewhere, you lose power at home. The car will stop charging, of course. If the power outage takes longer than, say, 15 minutes and the car goes asleep in this time again, it will not wake up anymore. So potentially, if you plug in your car at 10 o'clock and you go to bed 
and you've got a power loss at 11, the car has charged only for an hour and then it won't charge any further. So you're ending up with an uncharged battery, an uncharged car. You can't reach your destination because the car is not charged. Even the power has been restored. So waking up the car via the app, you can hear the click and this is all you need to do. And then it continues charging. See, charging continues. Haven't touched the car, just opened the app, which wakes up the car. Charging continues. Seven hours, 20 minutes. As soon as the power has been restored, the car should wake up automatically and check the power source, if there's power, what kind of power, and do the whole procedure again, what it does at the beginning already. But it doesn't. So let's program the scheduled departure for seven o'clock again. Um, five amps, ready by seven. And I think the charging has just stopped. Oh no, it hasn't. It has zero amps. This is the test phase. It tests the charger now. What kind of power is available? See, it's not charging. It's communicating, blue communicating. And this will stop. There we go. And now the charge will commence at some stage at 11 or 12 or something and then it makes sure it's been fully charged at seven o'clock well guys what do you think clearly a bug right and i discovered this quite a while back when i got the car new and figured out when i lose power here due to the uh, peak tariff to the off peak tariff it doesn't continue charging and the car was not charged in the morning and i was trying to make sense out of it but it doesn't make sense it's 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 a bug clearly all right, guys, anyways, um, well, if you like these sort of videos, um, head over to patreon.com slash TV and sign up to the growing community over there. Live streams, hangouts, behind the scene videos, Patreon bonus videos, and, and heaps more. WhatsApp group, heaps more. There are heaps of perks. Become a member, become a supporter of me and the channel. Patreon.com slash TV and sign up. I will see you there. Thanks guys, see you then, stay charged, bye bye.